Hi, my name's Connie Woodman, and I'm sending a thank you video to Pinoco for the 24-month subscription they gave our lab to help us produce robots for birds. I'm sending this video from the Parrot Safari Toy Factory exclusive parrot pet store in Binghamton, New York, where they make these kinds of parrot toys, which are traditionally what birds like Amaretto here like to play with. But at our lab, we're looking at a different kind of toy, an electronic and information-based toy that allows the birds to interact with the computers and also allows us as researchers to better understand what's happening in their noggins. Right? Right. Good stretch, big guy. Hi, Rudy. Yeah, so let's meet Rudy. Parrots, being smart creatures, seek out, comple <laughs> seek out complex and interesting Stop. experiences. Digital enrichment can add engagement to playtime. <laughs> if we compare his engagement to the digital toy to a regular toy like say these goofy links so you can see the digital toy has a lot more appeal Look, little goofy things. These are fun. These are fun. Oh, I'm wrestling with them. You want to wrestle, don't you? Nope. Not as good as having the digital toy. Yeah, and this is 10 minutes later. He's been doing this for 10 minutes. However, because parrots are destructive, digital toys often have short lifespans and can pose a danger if the bird gets to the electronics inside. Uh, this uh, is a cell phone toy for parrots, and you can see they've ripped the front off and tried to go for the circuit board. Yeah, they, they love it. This was a palm trail being used to test how parrots would use touch screens, and the answer is they chew off the frame around the touch screen. Since parrots eventually destroy physical controls, we designed a squawk-activated interface, get it, instead of voice-activated, um, that didn't need to be touched to be played with, like in the case of this memory game. So I'll pretend to be a parrot. Squeak! Oh, there, I made a match. Cool. Using patterns of squawks, the birds can move a cursor and select items. In other applications, they can navigate multi-level software. On the simplest side, I'll show you Magic and Rudy playing with a sing-along toy that sings back based on the volume and length of the birds singing. <laughs> Let's see the progression of a parrot over time. Here's Kinsasha's first exposure in super low resolution test video from 2004. The next video you'll see is eight exposures later. She can select a game from the menu, harass a digital fish, again, sorry for the low res, and then when she's done, she cycles through all the options and stops at the last option, which closes the game.
The problem is, without an ability to affect the physical world around them, the birds lose interest and eventually go back to being bored. So in 2009, during a class in electronics design for biology by Wayne Kaczynski and Stim Wilcox, myself and one of my lab crew, Gary, designed a robot that could be activated by internet-based interfaces. At the time, we were really bummed out that we had to build it out of cardboard, hot glue, and tubes. So during our presentation, we outlined using Pinoco for making future prototypes. So now I'll show you that Kinsasha um, can use the robot to choose when to feed Magic and Rudy yogurt-covered raisins. She found this activity to be very engaging. But the bulky cardboard robot is not safe to leave on the cage during the day while I'm working at the university. But then, Pinoco gave our lab a 24-month subscription to their Prime service. Now, with low-cost laser cutting and free shipping, we can make high-quality housings for the robots and send prototypes to other labs and bird experts to run a beta test. And with a quality acrylic housing being made, the birds will finally be able to earn rewards while no one else is home by beating rounds of, for example, the memory game. Translating from IDEA to SVG or EPS file for laser cutting is really easy. After selecting the quarter inch medium blue tint acrylic, we determined our measurements based on the material thickness. To make sure the measurements were correct, the housing was virtually constructed in Google SketchUp. The pieces were constructed, extruded to the right thickness, colored, grouped, and assembled. We found a couple errors and changed our measurements until we got a perfect model. So right now, we're using Inkscape and the Pinoco templates and guidelines to make the SVG files that the laser cutter will follow to cut the acrylic. Using our Prime subscription, it makes it affordable, and we're really, really excited. So, in closing, thank you, Pinoco. We'll keep you updated with how it goes.